Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. Today we're talking about Alex Garland's latest film, Civil War. Before we jump into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell button next to it. That way you get notifications for all my new videos, and if you guys can, give this video a thumbs up. In a dystopian future America, a team of military-embedded journalists race against time to reach Washington, D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. And the film stars Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, Kaylee Spaney, and Stephen McKinley. I'm a pretty big fan of Alex Garland's work. He's done movies like Ex Machina, Annihilation, 28 Days Later. Uh, his most recent film before this, which was uh, Men, I wasn't really a big fan of. But overall, I like the guy's work. So when I saw that he was doing this new movie for A24, Civil War, saw the trailer, I was like, yep. I'm in, I can't wait for this to come out. And the early reviews buzzing about this film were saying that it was, you know, it was amazing. So I was really looking forward to this one. So the story, it follows a wartime photojournalist played by Kirsten Dunst and her colleagues, Wagner Mora and Stephen McKinley, as they make their way across a hostile United States that has been torn apart under the rule of a third term president. And early on in the film, as the photojournalists are getting ready to go to Washington, D.C., uh, Kirsten Dunst's character, she ends up running into an up-and-coming photojournalist played by Kaylee Spaney, and she ends up sneaking her way into the group and tagging along with them for their journey. And so overall, you pretty much explore Civil War through the lens of the photojournalist, and so the film never really goes on one side or the other as far as the political spectrum goes. Like, if you're really looking for things, sure, you're probably going to see maybe leaning one side or the other, but overall, for the most part, it kind of like stays neutral, which I think was probably their safest bet. I know I've seen some people saying that, you know, where they didn't really pick a side, that they were playing it safe, and that was a detriment to the film. But honestly, that was probably their safest bet in this situation, because they, they did go one way or the other. You know, they were going to just piss a lot of people off. And honestly, one of my favorite things about Civil War is the relationship between Kirsten Dunst and Kaylee Spaney's character, and how that ends up evolving over the runtime of the film. You have Kirsten Dunst's character, who she's a veteran in this field, so she has seen a lot of shit in her time. And you can tell just with the the way that she reacts to different situations or I'd say almost like little reaction to, to different things because she's seen so much or just her facial expressions. And then on the other side, you have Kaylee Spaney's character. She's just starting out in this field. And so she's a little bit more traumatized when certain events happen, as I feel like most people would be who are just starting in a field like this. And so it's just really interesting to see how that relationship evolves over the course of the film, because you can tell that Kirsten Dunst definitely sees herself in uh, Kaylee Spaney's character. And at the same time, you know, she doesn't want to see this girl end up where she is at now. And so she's initially hesitant to take, you know, this character along. You know, she doesn't want to be responsible for her because obviously they're going to be going into some pretty crazy situations. And but at the same time, Kaylee Spaney's character, she's very eager and wants to impress this group of her, you know, her fellow peers where she's up and coming in the field. And so this group begins their journey to Washington, D.C. And along the way, you just see cars littered all over the highways. You see malls deserted, which just gave this really eerie feeling. And then the group starts running into some horrific situations as the journey continues on. Now, I've seen shows like The Walking Dead, The Last of Us, where you see people and, and creatures getting taken down. But I think what makes some of the scenarios and scenes in this film so horrific is that the fact that this has the very real possibility of it could one day, you know, maybe happen. And so between that and I think just the way that Alex Garland, the way that he shot this film, uh, just really added to that. And so, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of weird because, like I said, I, I've seen, you know, a bunch of, like, horror movies. So it's not like my, my first rodeo of seeing, you know, blood and guts and, and different things like that on the screen. Uh, but I just think that, like, sense of uh, realism uh, just really kind of added that an extra punch for me personally. And there's definitely more than just these two scenes, but I wanted to, to bring these up in particular because these are the ones that really stood out for me. Uh, was there was a particular scene without going into any spoilers where someone is in a pit that has to crawl over certain things and then there's another scene that I'll just say that involves Christmas decorations and, and I don't know if it was just because you have the combination of what you see with Christmas decorations which normally people associate with you know happy time of the year and things like that so just that that contrast between the two things but yeah just left me feeling really unsettled with both of those moments but like I said there's 
several other times throughout the, the movie where I kind of had that same feeling. So well done as far as that goes. And then you also have the scene which you see a little bit of it in, in the trailer with uh, Jesse Plemons, his character. And uh, yeah, I mean, holy shit, that scene was tense as fuck. Even though I had seen part of it in the trailer, I was still sitting there in my seat, you know, gripping, gripping my seat basically. And uh, man, yeah, Jesse Plemons, I mean, he he sure knows how to to play a bad guy. He's definitely a, a scene stealer in the film for sure. I also love the use of photography to capture these graphic or unsettling moments where you'd have a bunch of action going on or the aftermath of something, and then one of the photojournalists would be capturing it, and we saw those pictures. I thought that was a really nice touch for the film. And I thought the use of the soundtrack here was a really interesting choice, and I don't necessarily think it's going to work for everybody. I saw this with one of my buddies, and he was kind of on the other end where he wasn't really sure how he felt about it. So basically, you would have like a horrific situation going on, but then there would be a song that would be playing that would kind of be more a little bit more like upbeat so it wouldn't necessarily fit what you would think for that type of scene and it just made you feel a little weird a little uneasy and for me personally I think that's what they were kind of going for in the film I don't know who knows I haven't seen like any interviews or anything like that but for me it worked but I can totally understand if you're someone that that maybe kind of took you out of the situation a little bit um, but I, I thought it was an interesting choice regardless. And there is one particular character choice that's later on in the film. Something happens and the way that this all kind of goes down, I can totally understand some people being a little frustrated with that. Um, for me personally, it didn't really take me out of the, the, the moment. Um, but again, I can totally understand if you're on the other side of that camp where it's like, yeah, to me that doesn't really make any sense. Um, so just like a, a choice that they made there that is kind of like, yeah, 50-50. But yeah, overall, guys, I love this film. Even though I felt like I was going to have a panic attack at times, the cinematography is gorgeous, and I was just completely captivated by the day-to-day -day of these photojournalists. It's definitely a job that I wouldn't be able to do myself, so hats off to the people who actually do this in real life and see some of the horrific situations that you do and just having to deal with that and, and put yourself you know, in uh, harm's way. Yeah, no way I'd be able to do that. So it was just, it was really, you know, interesting to, to see something like that. Um, and yeah, so I, I really dug the movie. I know some people are a little split on it. Um, it's probably one of my favorites up there as far as like Alex Garland's uh, films go. So, so as far as the score goes, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I, I can't wait to check it out again. Like it's, it's weird. It's one of those movies where there's definitely some stuff in there that's a little hard to watch, but at the same time, like, I was, I was really captivated by the, the story and just, like I said, the day-to-day -day of these characters and, you know, capturing these different moments. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that I'll be picking up when it comes out on, on Blu-ray and 4K. So I'm curious, you know, what your guys' thoughts are. So let me know down below in the comments, you know, what did you think of the film? Uh, where does it rank for you among Alex Garland's movies? overall and again guys if you are new to the channel please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell button next to it that way you get notifications for all my new videos give this video a thumbs up and as always guys please make sure to check back for more pop culture with pat